Hello dear students, today I would like to talk about the, some properties of control system and also the transfer function. Let's start. One of the uh, properties of control system is principle of uh, causality. What is the meaning of the causality? And uh, what kind of systems actually control systems or causal system. We said that a system is causal or we call the system a causal system if the output of the system at any instant of time only depends on the past and current time of input. Please notice to this matter. A causal system is a system that the output of that system at any instant of time only, only depends on the past and current times of input. In other words, we can say that the causal system does not depend on the future time of the input. This principle is causality. Each system that depends only on the past time of input and does not depend on the future times of input, we said that this system is causal system. Okay, another properties of the control system is linearity, as you see here. Let's talk about uh, this item, actually. What is the meaning of the linearity? Which systems are linear in the case of control system? We said that a system is called linear if the principle of superposition and homogeneity apply. What's the meaning of homogeneity and superposition or additivity? Let's talk about that. First of all, let's talk about the superposition. We said that if we have the same system, which is called the G, Actually, we will see that this G is the transfer function of the control system. Okay? If we give the input signal X1 to the system and get the output of the, of the system Y1, and again, we give the X2 as an input to the same system and get the y of y2 as an input. So, if we add the inputs of this system, as you see here, we will have the summation of the outputs y1 and y2 at the, uh, as a response of the system. Each system that obeys from this principle, actually, uh, which one? The superposition. This, uh, actually, principle is a superposition principle. If we add the inputs of the system and could add the outputs like that, We, will see, we see that the system has the principle of um, superposition. Okay, let's talk about the homogeneity. We say that if we give the input signal to the system and get the Y as a response of the system, and if we multiply the constant value, please notice these phrases, 
if we multiply the constant value to the input of the system, we will have the same constant value multiplying to the output of the system. This is the meaning of the homogeneity. If a system apply these two principles, we can say that this system is a linear system. Superposition and homogeneity. Okay, another one is time invariant. Another properties of control system is time invariant. What is the meaning of the time invariant property? Let's talk about this property, time invariant. We can say that if we have x of t as an input of the system and have the y of t as a response or output of the system, so if we have a delay in the input, actually if we have x of t minus tau, so we will have the same delay in the output of the system. Actually, we will have y of t minus tau. It means that the output, the output does not depend on the particular time the depend is applied. Okay? The output does not depend on the particular time the input is applied. Let's give an example. Suppose that we have u of t like that, the step function as an input of the system. Input. Okay? This is our input, which is given to the system. So, if the response of the system y of t be like that. Okay? This is the response to this step function. This is the response of the system to this input. It means that this is our output. Okay, if we have a delay If we have the delay in the input, so it means that in the case of time invariant system, I'm talking about the time invariant system, please notice to this matter. So we will have the same we will have the same delay in the input of the system. It means that this system is time invariant. Time invariant. Okay? Let's continue. So, as a conclusion, to recap, actually, we, we can say that during this course, we deal with this linear, sorry, we deal with the linear time invariant causal dynamic system, briefly LTI system. We will consider and deal with, with such systems. 
during this course. Linear, time invariant, causal, dynamic system, LTI system. Okay, let's start this topic, mathematical modeling of control system. For studying control system, we need to model the dynamic system in mathematical form. Because this mathematical form help us to control, to design uh, controllers and can investigate these systems better and more suitable and useful. So, as you know, we talk about the dynamics of system. We can define actually the dynamic system as a set of equation. And this set of equation can be described in terms of differential equation. It means that we can define the dynamic system in any different fields. It doesn't matter which fields we are talking about that. It can, it, this, that system can be a, an electrical system, mechanical system, chemical system, uh, and other different fields of science and engineering actually. We can define the dynamic systems with the differential equations. Okay? So, as I said to you, uh, for the investigating the, con the dynamic system, we need to uh, model the system in a mathematical form. So, the two most common methods of modeling linear systems are the transfer function method and the state variable method. Okay? The transfer function method and the state variable method. Please notice that. I would like to emphasize this matter that the transfer function the transfer function method is valid only for the linear time invariant system. Whereas the state equation can be applied to linear as well as nonlinear system. Now let's talk about the transfer function. First of all, we will see the transfer function and uh, calculate the transfer function and some properties of that and so on. Let's uh, start with the transfer function. What's the transfer function? We say that the transfer function the transfer function actually we consider the linear time invariant system defined by the following differential equation we can define a system like that. This is our output and these are, this is our input of the system. Okay? Transfer functions are commonly used to characterize the input-output relationship of uh, components or a system. Okay. We can say that the transfer function of this system, this system, this is a dynamic system which, which can be defined as a differential equation. We can say that the transfer function of the system is the ratio of the Laplace transformed output, this is our output, the Laplace transform output to the Laplace transfer input when all initial conditions are zero. 
Please notice this matter. Uh, all initial conditions uh, will be zero. Okay, we show the transfer function with the g of s. We said that the uh, in the nominator of the transfer function, we will have the Laplace transform of output. And in the denominator of the transfer function, we will have the tra Laplace transformed of the input. Then the initial conditions is equal to or equal to the zero. Okay, we can rewrite the transfer function like that. It comes from the differential equation y of s is our output, x of s is also our input. Okay, this is our transfer function. Block, uh, we can uh, show a system uh, as a block with the transfer function. You can see that g of s, please notice g of s is the ratio of the Laplace transformed of y of s to the input Laplace transform input of the system. Then all initial conditions are zero. Okay, sometimes we need to know about the uh, order of a system. We need to have information about the order of a system. How can we calculate the order of the system? We say that the highest power of, the, of S in the denominator, the highest power of S, the highest power of S, here is N, is the, in the denominator is the order of a system. So in this case, uh, the order of system is N. Okay. We see that we can, uh, we could write the transfer func function like that. So, interestingly, we see that we can calculate output of the system. If we have the transfer function and input of the system. So, we can say that we can write or actually the output can be written as the product of transfer function and input. Actually, in the form of Laplace transformed. Please notice, I'm talking about the Laplace transform of output and Laplace transformed of, of input and this transform, transfer function also is written in the form of transform Laplace transform. Then we have in the complex domain. So in the complex domain, we can say that output of each system can be written as um, product of transfer function and input. Okay. From the properties of Laplace transform, we know that the multiplication, the multiplication in the complex domain is equivalent to convolution in the time domain. Okay? This is the convolution formula of x and g. So in the complex domain, if we have the multiplication, it means that we will have the convolution in the time domain. So, if we could calculate the Laplace transform of output, then with taking and applying the uh, inverse Laplace, we can get the 
output in time domain. Okay? Another topic is block diagram. I would like to show you the block diag diagram of the uh, actually a closed loop control system. As you see here, we can convert all of the signal into the complex domain. Okay? R of S is our reference, E of S is our error, G of S is our actually transfer function, and C of S is our actually output. And this is the feedback. After converting all of the signals and calculating the transfer function of a system, we can show the system in block diagram diagram form like that. Actually each of the components and functionality of components can be shown uh, in the block diagram as you see here. Okay, in the next class I will talk about the again transfer function and we will see that how can we calculate the transfer function of open loop system and also a closed loop system. Thank you. See you later.